Today is February 7th, 2020. It's a notable day within the brewing industry because it's the kickoff to Russian River Brewing's Pliny the Younger Week. Now, if you're not familiar with Pliny the Younger or Pliny the Elder, go ahead and just Google on that. Google on Pliny the Younger 2020 and you'll get a good feel for it. People line up for six, eight hours just to get a half pint of beer. So it's a crazy sought after, very limited release. This year's notable because they're actually gonna bottle some of the beer and you can buy it at the pub. Now keep in mind it, it runs for about a week so your opportunity is pretty limited, but it gives you a feel for how sought after this is. Now it makes me think of an East Coast beer that in my opinion is every bit as sought after on a regular basis. And that's up in Vermont, the Alchemist Heady Topper. A very different beer compared to the West Coast, uh, Pliny the Younger, Pliny the Elder, but it shows that these double IPAs that use a lot of hops, a lot of late hops, and in particular, a lot of dry hops are very much sought after. And, and frankly, I think a lot of us do that at home these days. So the big question is, how do you maximize the utilization from your hops? I'm gonna show how I think that the hop suspension within your wort, once you dry hop, starts to fall out quite quickly. And in a conical fermenter, like this one here, before you know it, in a very short amount of time, all that hop material is already fallen through the liquid and sitting down in the bottom of the cone of the conical, where it really does no good. So I'm gonna show a technique where I'm gonna use CO2 to effectively burp up that hop, put it back in suspension. This is in contrast to what a lot of the big breweries do, where they'll actually recirculate the tank. Make sure that hop does not just reside in the bottom of the conical fermenter, but is up in the wort where it does the most good. Throughout the video, you might hear me say that in my opinion, if you're in a carboy or a bucket situation, not such a big deal, because the widest portion of your vessel is at the bottom, where the hop's gonna wanna sink down to, and so you're still maximizing the surface area between the hop and the wort to get the most out of it. So if you like your IPAs, if you do a lot of dry hopping, I think you're gonna get a kick out of this video. I think it's gonna show some interesting things. In the past, I've done other dry hopping videos that I think are still relevant, but this just kinda of takes it a little extra step further. So sit back, it should be very interesting. And I think the beer that I produced from this process is gonna be quite good. And we'll get to that at the very end of it all. So sit back, take a look, and let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at the hops that I'm gonna be using on this project. As you can see, there's quite a bit of them. Much of those will be added late in the whirlpool, and then of course being used for the dry hopping. I also want to point out that I keep all my hops fresh through use of that vacuum pump and these canning jars. Once I'm done with them, pump the air out, put them back in the freezer, and they store real good, stay very fresh. Okay, so let's see how quickly these hops sink. And again, my thesis on this is that they sink quite a lot quicker than you think. And in a conical fermenter, they're going to all wind up packed down in the cone, not doing much good. So I'm gonna put in just a small amount of hops here. It's Sunday at three o'clock. Plain old glass of water, cold water. And we'll just see how that progresses over the next 24 hours or so. Okay, so this is sort of interesting. Here we are just literally 15 minutes after I put the hops in the water. You can see it's already dissolving, starting to sink down. And I don't know, I, my guess is gonna be by the time I'm ready to wrap up my brew day today, this experiment might be over and all those hops will be on the bottom of the glass, which is not gonna do much good in a conical fermenter. Okay, it's Tuesday morning now. I did my little hop experiment Sunday, I think it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So we've been in for 
oh, a day and a half, we'll call it. And as you can see, all the hop is effectively sank down to the bottom. This is why I'm going to do this burping experiment to resuspend that hop back up into the wort inside the fermenter to um, try to get more utilization out of it. Okay, I have it all set up now to do a little CO2 back flush. Basically, going to try to get that hops that settled down to the bottom of the conical resuspended into the work. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you can see the setup from the CO2 canister to the bottom dump port of the fermenter. I'm going to set the pressure on the regulator to about five pounds. I'll turn on the gas and I will open up the butterfly valve and you can actually probably hear it gurgle on up through. I will comment that up to this point, I've already purged all the air out of my lines by simply keeping the butter by simply keeping the tri clamp loose, turning on the CO2, flushing out the lines. So we're all pristine, ready to go. I'll uh, go through the steps right now, and we'll see what we get. About five pounds. That's all there is to it. Okay, the beer's done. And I'll have to say that the results, they're really pretty good. Now I can't really tell is it a lot better, a lot different than some of my other dry hopping techniques. I don't really have a side by side to uh, make that kind of comparison. I will say this though, I, I achieved the goal I wanted and I think every bit as importantly, I didn't have any problems because of it. You know, sometimes you add a new variable into your process and you notice right away that the results are not nearly as good or maybe there's even problems that come along with it. Not the case here. So in the future, I think I'll continue to use the CO2 burp, resuspend that hop up into the beer during my dry hopping to hopefully get the most out of it. Beer tastes good. No major problems. It's worth a try. For those of you with conicals, if you're having trouble with your, your utilization from the dry hopping, you might want to give this a shot. It's pretty easy to do. As always, appreciate you watching. Feel free to comment, and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.